Now, what should we look for when we're trying to make a decision about who to vote for? Obviously, we haven't settled on one person yet. Some people who backed Perry now back Kane. Some people who backed Kane now back Gingrich. The same 25 or 30 percent back Romney. Some people who back Bachman say Bachman can't win. First of all, and same with uh, Santorum, first of all, let's start from the beginning. Please do not be part of the tug and pull of these polls and phony experts. If you like a particular candidate, but they're not the number one, two, three in the latest poll, so what? Nobody's voted yet. Don't get all glum and dispirited. Don't disenfranchise yourself. Wouldn't that be goofy? Fight for your candidate. Speak up. Now's the time. That's what a primary is all about. They all have their imperfections. Some are more imperfect than others. And that's the point. You're going to take the measure of these candidates and decide what? Now, this is what's key. What is crucial in analyzing these candidates, their personalities, their characters, their records, what they say today, what they said yesterday? What's crucial? What's crucial is how are they going to be able to deal with a societal crisis? Because, ladies and gentlemen, that's where we're going. If we manage to evade it, we're going to evade it, really, by a hair. But what you see in Europe is coming here. There's no question about it. Because the current crop of people in Washington, D.C. have absolutely no intention of reversing course. In fact, they're putting their foot on the gas pedal. Now, I'll get to more of that in a moment. So, this is a different election for many reasons. One of them is, in my humble opinion, you need to think of it differently. That is, whatever their records, whatever their past flaws, whatever their strengths, in your mind's eye, put them in the Oval Office where the entitlements are collapsing, where there is, I won't say violence in the streets, but let me put it to you this way, challenges in the streets, When you see the unraveling of the civil society, and I pray to God we avoid it. But there are forces in this country which seek to have this confrontation. And you can see them propping up, popping up all over the place. You can hear them coming from Congress and coming from the news media, coming from academia. There are forces in this country that want violence, they want confrontation. But the system, the governmental system, is is breaking up. The welfare state is collapsing because it never could work. It never could. Which brings me back to the point. Who do you think, sitting in that Oval Office, will have the strength, the wisdom, the judgment, the capacity to make the right decisions under those circumstances. That is how you need to think of this election. You need to think of this election differently. Not the usual template. These aren't the usual circumstances. The environment's much different now. Who will have the strength, despite all the challenges, to uphold the Constitution and not to seek power outside the power that's granted to the president. Who will have the strength to begin the necessary process of unraveling not the society, but the government? The parts of the government that are extra-constitutional or that operate unconstitutionally. Who will have the strength to fight for that? These are crucial questions, because this is the bottom line, isn't it? This is the bottom line. These are different times. 
fact, in my lifetime, this is the most dangerous challenge our country faces. And it's from within. It is the worst kind of threat that a nation can face from within because it's the most difficult to deal with. A nation will rally behind a foreign threat. World War II, as an example. 9-11 at the beginning, and so forth. But a nation divided, and by, by the way, not into two camps, but into multiple camps. Some, some arguing, some challenging the very nature of the society, some trying to fundamentally transform it, that is, destroy what we've created. This is an extremely difficult challenge. And it is a cancer. Abraham Lincoln talked about it during the Civil War. As a matter of fact, before the Civil War. Well before the Civil War. The Founding Fathers talked about it. And they tried to create a a governmental structure to avoid it. Ronald Reagan talked about it in his first inaugural. As have others. These are challenges that determine what kind of a nation we will be. America will exist. The question is, under what circumstances? Will we be a free people? Or will we be a slave to the IRS? Will it be a people who respect private property rights, whether people are rich, poor, or in between? Or will we be a police state where the government decides what you need and how much you get? So, yes, I can sit here and pick apart every damn Republican candidate running. I'm not talking about going through their records, some of which are bad uh, or worse than others, I should say. But I'm talking about trashing them. And then if I do that, what's our alternative? And if I do that, where do we go now? The issue is, who do you want in the Oval Office when things begin to collapse, when things begin to unravel? Is it the greatest debater that you've seen in recent times? That's not an issue, really, is it? I'm not putting down Newt Gingrich. I'm saying, who cares about that? Honestly, who cares? It's got to be somebody who's disciplined and decisive and focused. And by all means, conservative. Even with an imperfect record. We're all imperfect. But some are more imperfect than others. Is it going to be an individual who's taken 50 positions on five different issues? Or do you believe that individual is sincere in their beliefs? But sincere or not, how do you think they'll behave once in the Oval Office when the unraveling reaches a high point? I can go down the list. But this is the bottom line. It's not immigration per se. It's not fiscal matters per se. It's not entitlements per se. It's not national security per se. It's all of those things and more. Because the next president, the next president is going to face challenges like no president in our lifetime. I am very, very serious about this. Let me repeat. The next president is going to face challenges like no president in our lifetime. Because the country is unraveling. Because our politicians have turned one citizen against the other. Because they bought and paid for support and they've created their own support system through entitlements and welfare and all kinds of programs and deceit. We've now reached a pinnacle. We've now reached a pinnacle. I don't care what Politico has to say about Herman Cain. I don't care what XYZ Group has to say about Michelle Bachman 
I don't care about what this guy over here has to say about Santorum or that one over there has to say about Gingrich or down the line. Because the vast majority of what we're discussing has absolutely nothing to do with what's about to happen to this nation. Who do we want as President of the United States who's going to help keep this nation together? That's the question. That's the question. 